So welcome to the third webinar with CCI Traders. Uh, wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us this morning. It's nine o'clock in London. I've got a really uh, topic and content filled webinar for you today. And I'm going to today talk to you a little bit about how trading strategies are created. I'm going to show you some examples of uh, how you can trade, uh, create a trading strategy. I'm also going to talk a little bit about indicators 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 you can plot on your charts indicators you can put on uh, below charts so you can actually start looking at uh, how trading strategies have evolved and how i look at trading strategies and then the next webinar which is going to be next week i'm going to show you how we we look at getting the best from trading and how we 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 become excellent at trading how we the little things we need to make our trading that little bit different give us that edge with regards to the strategies with regards to uh if you like the risk management the reward management of a strategy how just simply tweaking things like reward and risk you can make such a massive difference to your trading strategy and your trading business as a whole so i'm just hanging around just for a few more minutes uh, just to Wait for some more people loading. We've got some people from Sierra Leone, I see. Uh, we've also got people from Asia and uh, America, I think, as well. One of those people's from America. So that's fantastic. So we'll just wait a few more minutes. So this one's going to be really fun packed. The It's going to be about an hour. And what I would suggest you do is you can have the ability to send through chat requests or questions so if you send through a question and they will be moderated throughout the webinar so while the webinar is going on if you have a question and it is relevant what i will do is i'll stop and then answer the question but wherever possible i'd like to leave the questions till the end but if if you can start typing them through the webinar so by the time we get to the end of the webinar i can answer the questions that you've asked so the chat window is very simple it's at the bottom of the screen as you should be able to see it on your right hand side of your screen a little chat uh, facility and also if you're watching this on a mobile phone there will be some lag so you will get some lag unfortunately um, and there will be a little bit of a delay between what you're seeing and what you're hearing so that's something that's uh, always a good idea to use a laptop or a desktop if you can so I just want to you know, give it a few more moments. We've still got people joining us. Um, there's more people joining us all of the time. So you can all still hear me, I hope. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the webinar. The webinar, as I say, goes through various stages of a trading idea, how we build a trading strategy, how we use those indicators, and how we move forward. So I will start the webinar now, and you should be able to hear my voice straight away and then we can take questions. So please remember the rules are simply write questions as you go. And once you've uh, got to the end of the webinar, we can answer those questions, spend a few minutes to uh, get yourself going. Hi, good morning. Uh, um, so the $200 beginners bonus, I'll cover that off at the end, guys. I will cover that off at the end and uh, give you details of all about CCI traders as a brokerage what the benefits are, how the $200 beginner's bonus works, and uh, I'll, do, I'll cover that off at the end as well. So fantastic, let's get started. Just wanna uh, get myself going now, so here we are. So we're talking today about trading strategies and indicators. Uh, before I do so, before I talk about trading uh, strategies and indicators, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what trading ideas are all about what is a trading idea a trading idea is something that you need to be aware of you need to be it needs to be something that you need to know how to create and it's certainly something that you need to understand the fundamentals of so a trading idea is something that allows you to create the blueprint for a trading strategy now I'm going to share a couple of strategies with you today but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in order. Rather than just give you the strategy up front, I'm going to do this in order to show you how I arrive at these 
trading strategies that I use and how you can use the same process that I use to replicate in your trading. Now remember, you know, education is so important and in, in some of the workshops I'm going to do coming up, I'm going to share some other uh, tools and tips with you, such as risk management, such as other factors that will allow you to capitalize on market moves in the most safest way possible. So what you need to establish with a trading idea is do you want a short term or do you want a longer term strategy or do you want both? Now remember, you don't just have to rely on one strategy. Your strategies consist of many different strategies, shorter term, longer term. Your strategies and factors that will dictate what ones you choose, your preference, your time frame availability. More on that later in a workshop when I talk about trading uh, models and trading styles and the makeup of a professional trader. But you need to establish whether you want a short term strategy, longer term or both. Let's look at short or longer term because that's important to understand what we mean by that. A short term is something for entering and exiting within the same day. A long term is something to run for a day or more or even longer or a few days or a week or two. So the distinction between the types of trading strategy you're going to run is determined by the length of time the trading strategy may run. Now a little word on a little caveat here. You may have a short term strategy designed to go into the market and out of the market to exit a profit in the same day. However, that trade may run for days and days and days and which means that your analysis at the beginning wasn't good enough. So the whole point of trading strategies are that you need to understand the type of strategy you want to create, whether it's going to be the same day to enter or exit or something you want to run for a few days or more to actually capitalize on, on the market moves. It's your choice. It is your choice and you can run both. But before you decide to run both, you need to understand the distinction between the two. Let's look at time frames. We mentioned it just now, but time frames are important to understand so we can build our trading ideas around it. <coughs> when looking at charts, you can change the time frame you are looking at. And I'm going to show you that in a moment when we look at charts. From one minute candles all the way through to one month candles. Now, sometimes people say bars, price bars. Sometimes people say candles. It's exactly the same thing. If you are trading short term, then you would look at the lower time frames towards the one minute candles, five minute candles, 15 minute candles, 30 minute candles, etc. If you are trading longer term, then you would be looking at higher time frame charts. And I'm going to show you both today. So let's take a look at the time frames available to us as retail traders. This is a simple diagram to show you the types of time frames you have available. Starting with the lowest on the left, leading the way all the way up to the higher time frames on the right. Now the one minute time frames are usually what we consider to be scalping strategies. Now what I mean by that is that you're going into the market and coming out of the market and looking to come out of the market within a few minutes, half an hour or so at a time. Day trading, again, when we're looking at day trading, we're looking at getting in each day and coming out each day. And this is where we're looking at those 15 minute, 30 minute and one hour time frames. Now, if we go to a higher time frame, the four hourly and the daily, then what we're looking at here is we're looking at the higher time frames to give ourselves the scope to trade on a longer time frame for a day or more or a few days or even longer. When you're looking to trade on the weekly and the monthly chart, these are usually set aside for investors that have invested quite a serious amount of money, higher amounts of money for hedge funds, etc. and institutions. Because the weekly and monthly charts 
often have trading systems and trading strategies running for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months. And you do need large size capital to be able to trade on those time frames. So we're looking as a retail trader to trade on the lower time frame and the medium to higher time frames. The higher time frames, the weekly and monthly, we tend to stay away from. So now you have the time frame sorted. You understand time frames. You understand what we're looking at. In this section, we're going to switch to your trading charts. Let's look at some charts. And you're going to see how price action and other factors often dictate what price is going to do in the future. If you can understand what price action is about to do, then you're halfway there to understanding where to get in and where to get out of the market. It's all about what happened in the past and how it may happen again. Let's go. So hi everybody, we're looking today at trading strategies, trading ideas and indicators. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is trading ideas. So trading ideas are ideas that you have of how you want to get into the market. Now we're looking here at the X station platform. So we're looking at CCI Trader and we're looking at the trading platform where your charting uh, patterns happen. So let me give you a quick overview of the three areas that you need to be aware of. The first area is this area at the bottom here where my cursor is moving and this area is the open positions and pending orders area. So if you want to put a pending order in, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. This is where your orders will sit and your open positions will sit. What that means is that every time you go into the market, the trade you are placing or the trade you have placed will appear here. Now the second area is this area here, the market watch. Now all you need to do with this area is click, simply click in here at the currency pair you wish to trade. So for example, if you want to choose Euro Pound, Euro Pound comes up and you can click it and it gives you the ability to either buy or sell, put your stop loss, take profit in this area here, etc, etc. You can search for most instruments in here depending on what offering CCI offer you. So for example, if you want to search for oil, oil is here. You can look for oil, the sell price and the buy price of oil. You can adjust your CFD size here so your volume can be adjusted with this tab here. If you want to look for other things such as gold, gold is there and you can have a look at the price of gold selling price and buying price here. So obviously you've got the difference between the two and uh, you can also then look at the chart. So if you're actually looking at the instrument here, so for example if we look at UK 100 here, we can see we have the little chart symbol here. If we click there, it will open up a chart over here on our third area of our charting software. Now our charting software is where we can actually start to look at trading ideas. And trading ideas are very important to understand because there's th certain things I want to uh, draw to your attention and certain things that I want to uh, give you an idea of as to what we're looking at. So we tend to try to find places where to buy and where to sell. We're looking to buy the bottoms and sell the tops. So we would look, be looking to buy here and we'll be looking to sell at the top. And that in essence is how we build a trading idea. A trading idea is very simply a pattern that we look for and where we want to get in and where we want to get out. So the first thing we want to make a note of is trading ideas. A trading idea is very simply put an idea that we are going to use to trade to get ourselves in and out of the marketplace. Okay, so trading ideas, once you have an idea of where you want to 
uh, build how you want to build a strategy for example but you have an idea as to what you want to look for well another way you can look for highs and lows in the marketplace remember the market moves in cycles so currently we're looking at a one hour chart we're looking at UK 100 which is the FTSE 100 and we're looking at the hour chart we can change this to any chart we want by clicking this menu here so we can click there and let's say we want to choose uh, EuroCAD for example so we click EuroCAD and it's a very similar looking chart we've got bars going up and down and we're now looking at EuroCAD on the one hour chart so in order to look at buy highs and lows in the marketplace what we can do is we can use a tool called fractals uh, fractals let me show you where fractals are so I click the FX indicator here can you see this little area here click there and type fractals and it actually starts to then pre-populate the word for you and fractals basically are little diamond shapes that are plotted onto your charts and arrows that actually show you highs and lows in the marketplace so as you can see here if we zoom in a little bit you can see what I mean by this you can see that what happens is X station recognizes there's a high and recognizes there's a low and fractals will allow you to then show you highs and lows in the marketplace so again this is all done through CCI Trader so another useful tip with uh, fractals is that fractals are put on usually three bars behind so what happens is a fractal is placed there the blue diamond as you can see three bars will lapse and then another one will be placed once it recognizes that there is another high or another low and it hasn't recognized that yet so what it's looking for is it'll wait for this bar to move up and potentially put this in as a fractal low now what's the benefit of knowing where the highs and lows are in the marketplace well the benefits for you as a trader are very simple if you can recognize where the highs and the lows are in the marketplace first of all you can identify trend you can identify trend because as you can see here the blue dots or the blue arrows are getting lower and so are the pink arrows or the red arrows that are going up if we look at another instrument let's look at another instrument or another currency pair let's look at uh, dollar Swiss okay dollar Swiss as you can see here let's put it onto a daily time frame so at the moment we're looking at h1 which is one hour we can click here and we can now go to a daily time frame and the daily time frame as you can see is a little bit sideways so the red arrows are going up and the blue arrows are going down so we've got like a an area that's actually coming down at the top and going up at the bottom so it's actually converging it's a sideways market but if we go back a little bit in time we can potentially see that over a period here the market was falling and you can see the blue dots or the blue arrows were falling and the red arrows were actually going up so let's just go back again and look at that as you can see here in this period here of two months this was April 2019 as you can see the dates at the bottom and June 2019 the blue arrows were falling and so were the red arrows which means we've now got a downtrend the market is generally falling down so as you can see here the price here if we use this little area here this crosshair we can now see here price was at 10230 and down here was at 0 nine seven zero zero which is a 500 pip difference but it moved down in cycles so we can see that we've got fractals here to give us a good indication as to where the market direction is heading ie the fractals are getting lower the blue fractals are getting lower the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting lower and that's another good indication as to see how the market is moving so you know you're getting into the right uh, cycle and the right direction because trading is all about trading with the trend you want to be trading with the trend not against the trend in the beginning as a trader trading is all about staying safe and staying on the right side of the market so you would only be looking at trading with the trend and you'll be looking to place sell trades through here 
if you were to place buying trades through here yes you would make money in the short term the market did move back up again but generally speaking you would be trading against the trend which is dangerous so the whole idea of trade of trend is to establish which direction you're going to trade so for example in this instance your dollar swiss if we just go to the end now and the current price as you can see dollar swiss is a little bit on the sideways uh, market if it's going sideways the lows are getting higher and the highs are getting lower so it's a sideways market but if we look at something like euro dollar on a daily time frame and just adjust it so you can use this area here to adjust the chart as you can see we're in a downtrend okay so it's generally speaking it's getting lower although the highs are getting lower the lows are getting a little bit sideways but generally speaking over the last probably um, period of maybe a year or so you'll see that euro dollar generally speaking was going in a long-term downtrend so I use these plus minus signs to actually come out to see what's happening in a more longer term so if we were to look at these highs getting lower and the lows getting lower you can clearly see that during the period of 2018 euro dollar as a currency pair was selling off and apart from this spike here which happened sort of the early part of this year things have been selling off generally speaking in euro dollar so the euro has been weakening and the dollar has been strengthened so that's really how we look at highs and lows so if we put the fractals back on here again you'll be able to see what I mean by that click apply and there they are so the blue arrows are getting lower apart from this old spike here and the red arrows are getting higher uh, sorry getting lower as well so everything's going down in a downwards movement now just one other piece of information for you which is useful is that when the markets are generally falling it falls in cycles so for example we have a cycle and a phase okay so basically what that means is that when the market is falling in a downtrend like this this is called phase one the market is moving in the direction of the trend the overall trend when the market pulls back and this happened for probably you know six or seven days or more then that's what we call phase two but usually the highs get lower so that it's a movement to the downside which is quite a long movement and then a short pullback a downwards movement then a short pullback downwards movement short pullback and so on and so on and so on and this is the characteristics and these are the characteristics of currency pairs when you're trading them you know if you've got strong movements in one direction or another i.e downwards or upwards highs are getting lower lows are getting lower for a downtrend like this highs are getting lower and lows are getting lower for a downtrend then you'll be looking for the phase one phase two phase one phase two so we're just talking trading ideas phase one phase two phase one phase two so we're just talking trading ideas now we're not really talking about indicators as yet we'll cover off indicators in a moment the other thing with price action of course is that price action tends to hit levels that just stop so for example here if we just drew a horizontal line across here you can see that price in April came down hit that level came back up again and then back at the end of April hit it again and here you can see that it was actually pivoting around this price level uh, back as far as March now if we zoom out a little bit we can see that it was pivoting around this level back in uh, 2015 so if we just change to other currency pairs and other instruments we we'll show you exactly how it applies to other instruments as well so for example if we zoom in a little bit here okay we can see that we've got levels where price is bouncing off in this instance horizontally so along there bounce there bounce there bounce there broke through bounce back again and so on these are levels of what we call support and resistance so when price is bit above the level it comes up and down up 
and down and it l tends to bounce off these levels now when price is below these levels it's called resistance as you can see here look at that one complete move up stop dead and then pulled back again and that's because that was a level of resistance there it was preventing price from moving above had another go around about here eventually broke through and now testing it as support so indicators will help you identify levels of support and resistance in the marketplace okay so we're now talking about indicators now indicators once you've understood price action and where highs and lows are on the marketplace and on various different charts indicators can be used to help you determine even more detail about where market is likely to be going from where it's actually been indicators can be plotted on your charts to indicate various things depending on the type they will sit either over price or below it so if you imagine what we saw on the screen just now on the charts you'll see where price was and we had the fractals now fractals are a sort of indicator they indicate where the highs and the lows are in the marketplace fractals sit on price over the top of price so it actually sits there and overlays over price some indicators actually sit below the price so in a separate window underneath your price window I'm going to show you both types today there are many types and don't need to try and learn them all too many people try to learn and master everything before they actually start trading all you need to understand are the different types and find something that resonates with you and works for you everybody sees indicators differently I'm going to explain to you how they work what they do and how you can use them you can then decide for yourself how you take them forward pick the two or one or maybe a handful that resonate with you once you've done that you learn what they show because they will show you various pieces of information and all you need to do as a trader is understand what an indicator is showing you you don't need to learn or don't need to know how an indicator is calculated in the early days some traders come in and say well how does that moving average work how does that stochastic is calculated how is it calculated what are the numbers behind it why does it turn down before price turns down you don't need to learn or don't need to know that it's not important what you do need to understand is what they show and how you can interpret that indicators remember are lagging behind the price action price action is live the current price you see on a chart where the price is moving up and down on that bar that is the current price that is what price is doing right now as you are looking and all of the price bars before it or candles before it are what's happened in the past so price is the most up-to-date level price action is king so indicators are what we call lagging behind price so an indicator moves once price has moved not the other way around let's look at some indicators on our charts now and see how we can see them working and see how we can see what they show for us Okay, so here we are again we're on the charting software and I'm now going to start to show you and introduce to you the indicators that we can be looking at so I'm not going to show you every single indicator but I'm going to show you one or two of each type so the first thing I want to do is remove the fractals they're going to be um, in our way a little bit so to remove your fractals if you've got them on there just drop to the bottom here you can see you've got the little line here saying fractals and just click the cross and that gets rid of them so the first indicator I'm going to show you is something that I've actually shown you and introduced to you those of you that were watching the last webinar um, is what we call a moving average now a moving average is a line that's plotted in your charts so let's just go back to the previous or the current price action we do that by clicking this little plus sign here and going to auto adjust and move automatically to the recent point so 
we're now looking at current price of euro against the dollar it's currently sitting at 1.0848 as you can see so what I want to do now is I want to plot on here a moving average now a moving average is very simply a line that's plotted on your charts that shows you the average price of the last X number of bars so for example each one of these is a candle or a bar and if I was to plot on here the moving average say for example number one so moving average one moving average it would basically go through the middle of price because each bar is one bar now if I plotted on here a 10 moving average it would show me the average of the last 10 bars so it take the 10 candles which is around about that lot there and show me the average price of those 10 candles instantly now the benefit of this is to show us direction although we can see where price is going we can see generally it's going down moving averages will give us an indication in a simple eye to look at format what price is actually doing so we put a moving average on very simply by going to our FX here our indicators and clicking there and typing the word M okay moving average okay you can type O and up comes the MA's but various different types of them now we have various different types of moving averages we have EMA we have SMA and we have LWMA please at the moment just focus on EMA EMA is what we call exponential moving average it means that once it's plotted let's say it's plotted over the last 50 bars it's measuring the recent data of those 50 so for example it's not averaging out the whole 50 it's averaging the whole 50 but it's putting more focus on the most recent of those 50 to give you more clarity as to the current position so we simply click EMA there and we type in here the time period we want to use to measure so as I said earlier if I put on here one and I make it thick so we can see it apply you can see that the moving average wraps around price because all it's doing is it's measuring the average price of the last one bar which means it's going to move with price so if I want to now change that moving average I can go to our little line here that would get rid of it that there gets me the properties box and I'll now put on there say for example five period don't worry about shift and don't worry about based on close all you need to know is the number the color and how thick you want it click apply and now you can see the moving average has moved somewhat because it's now measuring the average of the last five bars so there's a little bit more clarity but sometimes five can be a little bit too much as you can see or not or not enough I should say as you can see you know it's measuring the last average price of the last five bars so a good place to start with is a 20 moving average 20 now we've got a little bit more clarity now we can see that the price action is moving away from where the moving average is the 20 period moving average now as you can see is heading down and is heading up so when the market is moving up the moving average tends to turn with it when the market is moving down the moving average tends to fall with it so we can put any number on this as well so we can change that 20 say for example to 50 which will give us a clear indication as to what's happening now, the average is now smoother it's flatter because it's measuring over a longer period if I was to change this to say a 500 moving average you'll see exactly what I mean by that okay the, what, the 500 moving average is virtually a straight line because it's measuring the last 500 bars however there is movement you do get movement in it but it's much smoother it's over a much longer period so let's now go back to our current position where we were 
and now change our moving average to say 50. So we've now got a white 50 moving average. So generally speaking here, when price is uh, moving down, the moving average goes down with it. And when price is going up, the moving average tends to cross up as well. Now we usually use moving averages in pairs. So like we use currencies in pairs, we usually use moving averages in pairs. So what we mean by that is we can plot onto this chart as many of these as we want. Of course we need to make them a different colour. I'll show you how to do that. So what we can do is go back to our indicators window, type EMA, exponential moving average, and this time we'll use a 200 period. Change the colour to say for example red. You can use any colour you want. Click apply. And now we've got two moving averages on here. Can you see that? So we've now got a 200 moving average and a 50 moving average. The 50 being the faster because it's the lower number. The 200 being the more longer term moving average because it's the slower one. And as you can notice here, price is generally falling, apart from here, where the moving averages did get a little bit close together. But generally speaking, as I said to you in the previous video, the euro dollar is generally falling to the downside. So we're only looking for sells. Notice how the 50 moving average, the white one, is below the red that indicates selling that indicates a selling market now if we to zoom out a little bit and go back to here which is 2016 as you can see the white moving average the fast moving average was above the slow moving average and therefore effectively what we've got here is we've got a market that's actually going up and for this period which is about six months you know, end of 2016 to sort of the middle of 2018. So that's actually almost over a year, actually. That is over a year there. That market was going up. Euro dollar was looking for buying opportunities. We were looking for buying opportunities in Euro dollar because the moving averages were that way round. So the lesson here really is to say that we can use moving averages in pairs they don't just have to be 50 and 200 they can be 20 and 80 they can be anything you want but for this particular example I'm using a 50 moving average and a 200 moving average and what that's doing is it's showing you the bias and the direction in the marketplace in this, in this instance market is going up because the 50 is above the 200 and in this instance, the 50 is below the 200, and therefore the market is falling. And we know that the moving averages are in the right position. In order to go from one position to the other, for example, in order for the 50 moving average in this example to be above the 200 and in here to be below, they have to, what we, you know, it's what we call a cross, they have to cross. And there are various different ways we can use this. For example, if we were in a buying position here and we saw the moving averages cross, then we could close the position we are already in. But more importantly, we can use these crosses as entry prices and exit points in the marketplace. So we can use this entry price here to get ourselves into a position. So in this instance, what we could do is we could look for moving average crosses when the 50 moving average crosses below the 200 here, we can look at selling. So we can look at selling here once this happens and look at the position we could have got ourselves into. Very good, very nice position. Now, of course, they don't always work. As you can see here, this one crossed and it was okay, a good cross, but then it crossed up before that. Let's just zoom in so you can see what I mean by that. So it actually crossed up. Let me just unautomate this. So as you can see, you know, it, it crossed up there and only went a little way. So you might find that some of these generally might be just very sort of short term crosses. But this one here that I'm showing you now 
this one happened in 2018 in May so had you gone into this position here you would have taken a long-term trade on this one on the daily time frame okay um, and when we talk about risk management later you'll see about how we put in stop losses and targets but let's say you put in a stop loss here of say 50 pips so the stop loss that you go into here or that the use here would be 50 pips above here just in case it does go the wrong way and your target would have been you know way down here so the, the moving average cross is a very good way of getting in and out of the market so there for example as you can see there as you see back in 2017 the moving average crossed there the two crosses there the 50 crossed above the 200 and then you've got this nice long move okay um, they don't always work as I say you know they don't always work but generally speaking when you see a moving average cross look at that one and price just fell like a stone so let's look at some other instruments let's look at some other just to make sure you know I'm not just picking one that works I mean for example here look at this okay so this is in 2017 same thing again you'd have taken that and you'd have been in good profit there it crossed above crossed again and then you've got that move there let's look at another instrument euro pound okay euro pound is a little bit sideways but again crossed move crossed move crossed move and so on and so on so generally speaking generally speaking once these moving averages cross one above the other or one below the other you tend to get moves in the direction look at that one there let's look at another instrument let's go to another instrument let's look at something that's a little bit more random pound Swiss same thing again so effectively here guys what you're doing is you're building up your own idea of a trading strategy a moving average cross it's called a golden cross when it crosses above it's called a dead cross when it crosses below and it doesn't just have to be 50 or 200 I just happen to like these now of course you know in the last if we look at pound Swiss for example in the last you know last year or so a few months or so we've had quite a few but if we go back to the euro dollar chart the euro dollar chart which is there we've only had one cross which was there in 2018 we had no moving average crosses at all last year now it doesn't mean to say you wouldn't have traded this on euro dollar purely and simply because you have other time frames remember so you can drop this down to say a 30 minute time frame and then you'll find you'll get a lot more opportunities so for example here we had one there we had one there which made money we had one there that made money we had one there that wouldn't have done we had one there that made money so most of the time these trading strategies using moving average crosses do actually work and again you know as I said to you back test them go back through your charts to look at them usually you can work with these on a say a 50 pip stop 50 pip target or something lower than that or something maybe with a higher reward to risk but again on subsequent workshops I'm going to cover what I mean by higher reward to risk but guys that's how a moving average or a pair of moving averages you could use to actually um, to, to get yourself an entry and an exit point let me just edit one of these for you so let's just change that 50 to say a 30 apply and let's now change this to say for example a 60 so we're actually making them a little bit closer together notice how we now get more crosses so you can get what we call false signals with them when they're too low and too close together but the whole idea of this exercise and this workshop is to show you how moving average crosses can give you the ability to create a strategy to get yourselves in and out of the market and I actually use a euro dollar 15 minute 50 crosses the 200 so this is the one I use quite a bit 50 200 
on a 15 minute time frame and that's the one I tend to use and there we go as you can see nice moves across there lovely move up to the upside cross down lovely move to the downside so moving average crosses will allow you to capitalize on market movements uh, when price is about to sort of reverse if you like so moving down moving average cross price is going up over a longer period now another indicator I want to show you which actually goes over price so moving averages are one of the indicators that sit over the top of price they overlay over the top is something new let me just get rid of these for you so you just simply click those to get rid of them and they're called what we call Bollinger Bands envelopes okay so a Bollinger Band is basically an envelope type indicator so what it does is it gives you a top a bottom and a middle and what it does is it wraps around price so the price is like the letter and the Bollinger Band is the envelope that the letter sits inside just like you were posting a letter now the standard setting for Bollinger Bands is 20 period two deviations and it's based on the close and you will have a middle band an upper band and a lower band just leave everything as it is and click apply and here we go these are our envelopes there's our Bollinger Bands that have been applied so as you can see we have what we call a high band an upper band and we have what we call a lower band okay now Bollinger Bands work best in a sideways market so as we looked at moving average crosses just now when they work in when the market is moving strong in one direction Bollinger Bands will work better in a sideways market okay so let's put this onto a daily chart and just zoom out so we can see exactly what we're doing here so as you can see you know had we looked at using these when the market is trending strongly we wouldn't necessarily be successful because with Bollinger Bands what we tend to do is we tend to sell at the top band and buy at the bottom band notice how Bollinger Bands when the market is going sideways ie not really going in one direction or the other like across here the Bollinger Bands get close together when you do get some movement to one direction or the other then the Bollinger Bands expand as you can see the, the band has expanded up and this band has expanded down so they become wider the mouth becomes wider because volatility is increased so the whole idea with Bollinger Bands is they're used in a sideways market when they contract look here how the bottom bands come up the top bands come down and now we've got that very narrow entry so now we've got a situation where we could have bought here and closed out here and sold here so use Bollinger Bands in a sideways market so again looking with your naked eye looking to see what the Bollinger Bands are doing so at the moment euro dollar is in a sideways market we could have bought here closed here sold here closed here again another good way and another good strategy you can use let's look at another instrument let's look at Aussie CAD for example and as you can see right now the Bollinger Bands have been uh, expanded when we had this price movement here but during this period here for two or three months let's just unautomate that again so for a period here across here of two or three months we had some good trading opportunities buying the bottom closing the top selling the top and closing at the bottom and so on and so on and so on so Bollinger Bands are a very good indicator to use on your charts when the markets are moving sideways of course the Bollinger Bands don't know the markets moving sideways that's where you have to kick in and use your own discretion to decide whether you're going to trade these or maybe a moving average cross dollar cad for example dollar cad right now is in a strong move up here but then all of a sudden it's going sideways as you can see so you would not be buying or selling or doing anything here 
because the Bollinger Bands are just simply gone. They're actually expanded. There's another strategy you could potentially use here, moving average cross, for example. So the whole idea is you're building up an, ar an arsenal now, or you're building up an army of strategies that you can use to get yourself into the market and out of the market at the points you see fit because you're using a strategy that will cover a specific market type. So moving average crosses for uh, you know markets that are moving strong and Bollinger Bands in a market that's moving sideways just like so here. Now if you want to remove the Bollinger Bands you can simply go here. If you want to edit them you don't really need to edit these because they're using a standard thickness and standard setting. You can adjust the the uh, thickness of the lines if you want to and if you want to you can actually by the bottom and close out at the middle band if that's something that you really want a little bit more of a tighter entry or, or a lower entry etc but that's Bollinger Bands that's how Bollinger Bands operate and when you compare them to moving averages of course Bollinger Band is a sideways market strategy system and the moving average is a more of a trending with volatility in one certain direction or the other system. So uh, we can look at now another type of indicator uh, which now doesn't actually sit on price so if we just bring this up a little bit um, the ones we've covered so far which is the moving averages and the Bollinger Bands which we'll just remove there okay sit on price they actually wrap around price the indicators that I'm going to show you now, so we've covered moving averages, we've covered the envelope type indicators. What we're going to now do is cover what we call the oscillator uh, indicators. And oscillating means basically going up and down. The word oscillate means to go up and down um, in, in, a fo in sort of quick format. So one of the uh, first oscillators I want to share with you is what we call a stochastic oscillator. So if we go to our indicators here, and type in S T O up comes stochastic oscillator now the standard settings on this there are various different settings you can use you can use 14 and 10 this is set standardly at 5 and 3 and we get the main stochastic line and we get a signal line don't worry as I say too much about that all I want you to do is I just want you to um, see how we read it so we click apply and notice what happens is the stochastic oscillator is placed underneath price so we have price here let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I mean by that so you can see we have price along here and we have the stochastic oscillator at the bottom so what we have here in essence is we have an oscillator that when price is moving up the oscillator moves up when price is moving down the oscillator moves down it does move sometimes at what seems to be out of proportion but again we can use this to our advantage so the oscillator will measure and is measured in between two numbers it's measured between 0 at the bottom and 100 at the top so as you can see the numbers here 100 and 0 so when the oscillator for example is at the bottom here what's happened is is the market is deemed to be in an oversold position it means the market has fallen and the oscillator is reading it the stochastic oscillator is reading it that it could be potentially be in an oversold position ie the price has reached a level where it's deemed to be oversold or the price is low and is likely to then go back up again the same thing here with when the price action is high and the stochastic is high so for example here as you can see the stochastic is at the top it's up near the 80 level and you can put some horizontal lines in here if you need to um, so if you wanted to put a horizontal line in above for example here you could so you can see where the uh, the stochastic is quite high so it, the stochastic was high in what we deem to be an overbought position so remember this is down to here is considered to be oversold and this here is deemed to be overbought so price is at a high level which the market believes price is about to fall so this can tend to be used to help you determine exits and entry prices so when price is you know, high you normally know that price is about to fall 
etc etc so stochastic oscillator is a very good one to use to look at market sentiment looking understanding where the market sentiment is is it high or is the market sentiment on the low side and we can use these for entry and exit points so when the price is above here we can look at selling and when price is down here we can look at buying okay so we're using a stochastic oscillator and uh, we're using that to determine levels in the marketplace now just one thing I want to show you is to drop down to a lower time frame it works on all time frames uh, but obviously this line here moves a lot quicker you know this is all in one day so it goes oversold overbought oversold overbought all in one day so you need to understand the time frame you are trading okay the lower the time frame you go the more noise you get so for example market in euro dollar this is between 440 in the morning and 620 we've been oversold overbought oversold overbought oversold overbought etc 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 eight or nine times in the last hour or two so what that's showing you is that the market is short term oversold short term overbought whereas if you look at the daily on the same currency pair and just make sure we zoom out a little bit so we can see some relativity we are now in a position of oversold and the last time we were high was probably a week or two ago so with the higher time frames you do get the signals and you do get the oversold overbought lines but you then tend to find what happens is you are looking at them less frequently as opposed to the shorter time frame but yeah with a stochastic oscillator you can use this to actually pick highs and lows in the marketplace again that are confirming and consistent with your price action so you're getting something here that's giving you that little bit of indication that this a isn't going to go any higher it could have done but didn't because you're in a position where you are over bought okay so that's the stochastic oscillator the next one which is another oscillator is the RSI it's a relative strength uh, index so this is the RSI RSI relative strength index standard period is 14 color blue now if we plot, plot that on there that doesn't really give us much difference compared to the stochastic as you can see it's quite high there um, but the RSI is a single line so the RSI is a single line so some people prefer to use a single line so for example you can still use the same uh, you know the type of strategy for example when the RSI crosses above the 10 level you want to be buying and when the RSI crosses below the 80 or 90 level from the top you want to be selling that's another way of building a strategy so it just gives you one line as opposed to the two lines uh, that the stochastic gives you so the RSI can sometimes be a little bit more easier to use so let's just close that down show you what I mean by that so for example here you have the same plotted lines on the side the same number plotting uh, 0 to 100 so you can actually use these in conjunction with the uh, price action so for example when it's overbought we sell off and when it's oversold we look at buying so the RSI is a little bit easier one to use um, but the, the the stochastic is probably um, you know adjustable it can be adjusted to suit different different styles of trading the standard setting as I say is 5.3 but you can look online to see what ones work for you and there are different settings you can use play around with it see what you like uh, with, with regards to the stochastic so let's put a stochastic back on here again and let's put that to a 14.3 this time so this time it's a lot smoother okay so a lot of a smoother curve as opposed to the 533 okay so it's a lot smoother so you know pick the settings that, rec that work for you uh, pick the settings that work for your style uh, we've covered off some various different strategies there that we can use we can use moving average crosses we can use picking the lows and picking the highs of the Bollinger Bands we can use moving uh, RSI or stochastic crosses so when the RSI or st stochastic crosses from uh, above the 7080 number uh, we're looking to sell and when it crossing below and above the 1020 number 
we can look at sell uh, look at buying so we can use the RSI stochastic to, to start to look at uh, trading strategies or one of the other indicators as well there's loads of indicators can't cover them all off in here um, but what we are going to do um, next week is we're going to look at some strategies working and running um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to excel in trading and uh, that's the next webinar that we're going to cover next week so to summarize today's webinar and today's learning we've used indicators to help build a strategy now although we've not got the specific the specific precise uh, entry uh, and risk management we're going to cover risk management on another webinar so be, you know, be sure to not to miss that one we use our indicators to help build the strategy we're going to use in fact the indicators or in, if you're using them together are the lifeblood of your strategy so we've covered moving averages moving averages plotted on the charts over the price over laying over price action if we use for determining turning points in the market for using trending markets where price is moving strong in one direction or another envelopes now we use Bollinger Bands and envelopes are there to wrap around price and again for turning points in the market but used in sideways markets where price really isn't creating any new highs or lows so we can use the top of the moving average uh, top of the envelopes and the bottom of support and resistance Remember, we covered support and resistance in the market horizontal levels of support and resistance moving averages could be considered as diagonal and sloping levels of support and resistance and oscillators oscillators again plotted below price action this time they're used in either trending or sideways markets but mainly sideways we can use them uh, with trending markets but mainly trending or sideways markets not really together and we look at picking up the highs and the lows so when the market is overbought we're looking to sell when we're looking to be oversold we're looking to buy so you can use them in either real market uh, trending or sideways but make sure you know which one is which um, and you can use them in cooperation with other indicators so for example if you want a bit more clarity you could look for a moving average cross but also at the same time the oscillator let's say you're looking for a moving average cross up a golden cross and you could use the oscillator also to confirm it's oversold so you're getting double the clarity and double the signal so strategy ideas for consideration we use indicators to help build our strategy moving averages we can look at price in relation to them so if price is above the moving average we're looking at buying if it's price is below we're looking to sell and when they cross we can look for turning points in the market and trading entry prices the envelopes we use the touch of the or the cross of the top outer level for selling and the touch or cross of the bottom outer level for buying and we can target the middle or the opposite wherever we wish for target so for example if we are buying when the price is at the bottom band we can target the middle band back up again or we can go even higher to the top band for our target and oscillators we look for the various extremes in the oscillators oversold and overbought and we can use these as standalone or in conjunction with other indicators as above when oversold we look to exit the sell and enter a buying trade or enter a buying trade if we're not in one and when overbought ie the oscillator is at the high we look to exit any buying we are doing and enter a selling trade okay guys so to summarize we've covered some of the more common indicators uh, which is oscillators and moving averages etc their settings and that's the standard settings but you know showing you how you can adjust the settings if you want to to play around and how to use them and that's really given you a good indication as to how you can create your own strategies now up next time and it's one not to be missed is what makes a good trader and how am I doing how you can benchmark your success and your a continued journey if it's going in the right direction as a trader so we can benchmark other factors into that as well so we're going to cover that off next week on Wednesday the 20th of May at 9 o'clock BST I'm now going to jump back into the portal and answer any questions okay guys so I'm hoping
hoping that you can hear me again now. Uh, we've got some questions that come through. So if you could just drop me a quick chat to make sure you can hear me again, because I've moved from pre-recorded back to live. It's now just gone 10 o'clock here in London. So if somebody can just confirm they can hear me OK, and uh, I then can continue and answer the, these questions that we have here. So the first question is, uh, the first one is the $200 beginner's bonus. Is that different from the $50 previous bonus? So the $200 bonus is an upgrade. You only get it once. You can't get it more than once. It's an upgrade on the 50. And that means that I've got a little slide to show with you, share with you in a moment on that. Um, so yeah, so the $200 bonus is an upgrade on the $50 bonus. The next question. Uh, your platform on the web is the best ever because you can anal able to analyze the market and execute instant orders. Thanks to CCI traders for the opportunity. That's really nice. Really kind to know. Um, that's from Joseph. Joseph uh, and Osama. So yes, yeah, it's it's a really good uh, platform. The CCI trader uh, platform is very good. It's a really useful piece. Piece of kit. I love using it. It's intuitive. It's also very uh, easy to use. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, can you please zoom it for me? I tried to, guys. Um, quite often, you can actually use Control Plus on your screen. If you use Control Plus on your screen, you can then um, you can see you know zoomed in. So how did you get the fractal tool to show you the highs and lows? I think I did show that, uh, but if you go to the FX function on X Station, so if you use X Station and uh, on the CCI Trader, let me go to the uh, screen share and show you. Let me show you here. Uh, you should be able to see here. Uh, my screen the fractal hide you simply click here and go fractal fr and that will plot the fractals on there for you leave the settings as they are and that's the highs and the lows uh, put onto your uh, screen for you hopefully that will make sense and use the fx function here this is where you add all your other indicators as well okay so let's uh, go back from there uh, the next question was, uh, is the moving average 1.4? The moving average was set, um, a set at whatever you want them to be set at. So moving averages can be set to whatever setting you want to. So I was using a, I started off with one moving average, but that just wrapped around price. And then I changed that to five and then 20. But you can use whatever moving averages you like. Um, there's also a question here about what's the best time frame for moving average. It's really down to you. Moving average crosses will happen on lower time frames more frequently. The higher time frames, they may only happen once a year or so. So the lower time frames will give you more moving average crosses, but what I call more noise. There's more noise on the high higher on the higher time for on the lower time frames purely and simply because price is moving that much more sharply so hopefully that answers your question on that okay please using the ma to determine the entry point do you have to enter the current price okay let me see if i can get where are we uh fractals there we go fractals are what you see there okay so they're the highs and the lows in the marketplace. So the system recognizes post, so after the case that that is actually a high and that is a low. So it recognizes it here that that was a low. It won't actually put it in straight away. It recognizes it three or four bars later because it has to move away to recognize that it is a low, okay? So back to the questions, uh, where are we? Sideways market we've explained. What is the best time to trade for a big time frame to trade for a beginner? Well, the best time frame to trade for a beginner, you know, is whatever money you're putting into your account depends on what time frame you can trade. I don't want to get too much into um, trading accounts. This workshop that's going to be for next time. Uh, but you need to fund your trading account with as much money as you can. The more money you trade with, the more money you put into your CCI traders account, the more trades you're going to be able to place on a higher time frame. Uh, 
Um, if EMA is crossing on the 15 minute time frame and selling on the four hour, okay. Uh, if the EMA is crossing on above on the 15 minute time frame and selling on the four hour time frame, in your opinion, what should you do? If you're getting conflicting signals, then you should stay away, in my opinion. Um, but if you want to trade, take the one on the higher time frame. Uh, my network was interrupted. Yes, I'm aware of all of that, guys. Um, is moving average connected to alligator? Uh, a moving average is simply a calculation. I'm not going to explain to you the calculation. Um, I'm just going to talk to you about what moving average is. A moving average is the average price of uh, of, of the last number of bars. So if you've got a 10 moving average, it's the average price of the last, last 10 candles or bars and it will move with price. So as price falls, the moving average falls. As price goes up, the moving average goes up as well. How can I join CCI traders and make deposit? I'm just going to do that now on the screen. Can you share your trading strategy with me, sir, so I can use it to create mine? Um, I want you to become all round traders. Yes, I do have strategies and uh, I'm really sort of, yeah, I've given you an insight to what I trade. 50 and 200 moving average crosses work very well, um, as you can see. Um, so that's really what I use predominantly most of the time, 50 and 200 moving average crosses. Uh, what's the condition attached to the $200? I'm going to cover that. Higher time frame is the best, like four hours and daily. There you will catch a lot of pips. Um, guys, remember the higher the time frame, the longer the trade will be running for. The lower the time frame, the shorter the time will, the trades will be running for. And therefore, your target can hit, get hit quicker, but so can your stop loss, if that makes sense. Okay. So let me just share with you quickly the. Um, what I prepared earlier for you, which was this. Okay, so this, you should be able to see here the presentation uh, for CCI. This is the uh, PowerPoint slides. Uh, so CCI is one of the best brokers to trade with. The reason for that is the high quality education for traders. And most brokers out there don't actually educate their traders, that their clients, they just let them get on with it. So at CCI do take uh, a bit of heart in offering education for their clients. There are other things we can do moving forward. Lots of other education we can do. I've been teaching for over 10 years and I've got lots of stuff I can share with people. Um, we also have access to big liquidity, of course, with CCI. CCI have access to big liquidity and direct market execution. You also get a 50% bonus, 50 bonus of your deposit for your first bonus uh, deposit. So that's a good way and a good reason for uh, depositing with CCI. And up to $200 educational bonus. That's very simple. We, the CCI were offering $50 and now they're offering $200. So it's a $200 educational bonus for watching these webinars. So it's a good reason for you to being here. And that's going to be helping you in your first trade. And you need to use that money in your first week of trading uh, with also MAM account services and also local representatives too as well um, in whichever region you are based. I know we're based in, uh, you know, whatever countries all over the world. We've got a wide, quite a global viewing today. Are there any affiliate programs? Is Yes, we'll speak to CCI about that. And I can give you details on how to do that now. So CCI, again, you know, is there's a website you can use, which is cci-traders.com. And cci-traders.com is the website you can use to get in touch with CCI. You can open your account. You can fund your account. You can contact CCI and you can get in touch that way uh, using the website there, cci-traders.com. I'm not uh, where I'm not sure uh, to answer the question any local reps in Sierra Leone, um, but I'm sure if you ping an email or send an email through to cci-traders.com on the website that I've just given you, they will be more than delighted to uh, you know get in touch and give you some support moving forward and how you can uh, move moving forward. So any further questions? We're almost up to an hour and a half now, including obviously the, I think there was a bit of an outage uh, a short while ago. So if anybody got any more questions, um, feel, please feel free to quickly pop them through. Um, I already have a live account. I think that the, the $200 is an educational bonus. So just check with CCI uh, Moses that uh, that's what you'll get as well. Just ping them an email via the CCI Traders website and they will 
I'm sure I'll get back to you pretty quickly to do that. So I hope that you've had value today. I do apologize for the little bit of an outage that there was earlier. Um, I hope it's been clear. I hope you've learned something valuable and uh, I hope that you've really got yourselves a little bit more educated now with regards to strategies. As I say next next webinar, I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth and, and show you things that you can really give you an excel at trading and also a couple of little tips and tricks that you can use when you're actually building strategies with regards to reward and risk management. Um, thanks so much and I'm really enjoying since day one of the lectures. Thanks to CCI for the capacity building. Oh, inspired very much. Thank you, Moses and Joseph. That's really kind of you to, to say those words. It gives me great pleasure if I'm actually helping people grow and develop. Now, as I say, my name is Mark Sapsford. I thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week at the webinar. The link will be sent out, I believe, later today. Uh, so get yourself registered on that webinar ASAP. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week and maybe even more of you. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Have a great day, one and all. Bye for now.